In this video, we provide the solution to question number 18 from the practice final exam for Math 1050. We have a radical equation, the square root of x minus the square root of x minus 5 is equal to 1. We need to find all real solutions, so we can ignore any complex solutions if there's any. Just real solutions here. Um, the strategy we want to employ here is we want to separate the radicals. So just get one square root on, let's say, the left-hand side all by itself. Because of the sign here, I'm actually just going to add um, the square root of x minus 5 to both sides. So we get the square root of x is equal to 1 plus the square root of x minus 5, like so. We then are going to proceed to square both sides, because squaring will get rid of the square root on the left-hand side. Now, one has to be careful here. When you square both sides of the equation, you're now introducing party crashers to this equation. That is, when we're done, we might have solutions that actually aren't solutions. They were imposters. So we need to make sure we check our answers at the end. Generally speaking, we should always check our answers to make sure we have a correct solution. But with equations involving square roots, it's imperative because even if you did all the algebra correctly, if you don't check your solutions, then you can't tell the difference between a real solution or one of these party crashers. Um, on the left-hand side, if you square the square root of x, you'll end up with just an x. On the right-hand side, you do have to FOIL this thing because this is 1 plus the square root of x minus 5 uh, times 1 plus the square root of x minus 5. So when you FOIL that out, you'll get 1 plus 2 times the square root of x minus 5. Um, and then you add to that, you'll get the square root of x minus 5 squared, which is x minus 5 itself. Um, so my recommendation here is going to be combine like terms. Uh, let's subtract x from both sides. Um, and then we have this negative 5 plus 1, like so. Uh, in that situation, the x's are actually going to cancel each other out. x minus x, x minus x. Uh, we have then 0 is equal to negative 4 plus 2 times the square root of x minus 5, like so. Um, let's move the negative 4 to the other side. Uh, so we end up with 4 is equal to 2 times the square root of x minus 5. Um, since both sides are visible by 2, it would be nice to get rid of that coefficient. So divide both sides by 2. We then have the square root of x minus 5 is equal to 2. Uh, much like we did before, we have to square both sides. Now, since we've already squared both sides, we're already cautious of these party crashers. Um, we don't have to worry about it again, I mean, because the problem's already there now. Um, on the left-hand side, the square root of x minus 5 will just be, when you square, let's get x minus 5. On the right-hand side, you get 4. Um, adding 5 to both sides, we're looking at x equals 9. That's our potential solution. But again, we have to be cautious. We have to check it. If we don't check it, we have some problems here. So let's put it into the original equation. If you put in a 9 and a 9, what happens on the left-hand side? The left-hand side is going to give you the square root of 9 minus the square root of 9 minus 5. Like so, the square root of 9 is 3. 9 minus 5 is 4, whose square root is 2. That is, in fact, equal to 1. So we do get the we do get that 9 is an authentic solution. And that was the only number we found. So therefore, we report that the solution to this equation was x equals 9.